this could happen again because the meeting is only allowed for 40 minutes which has been added by the government sorry friends sorry friends this is this is our not our issue it's have been uh, in this app itself it has been only 40 minutes which we need to do re-login re-login with the same id and password uh, Jashan, you can put that in the WhatsApp group so everyone. Yes, sir. I've done that. I've done that. Done, 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 done. Doctor Amit, done. Yeah. Should I continue or should I wait? Just wait for two minutes. Wait, Jashan, yeah. just see. Yes, thirty-eight participants have joined. Back. Thirty-eight. Thirty-eight have joined. Just wait. Thirty-nine. Forty. Forty have joined. Forty-one. Our infection doctors are there. Clinic मरे का काज जगह से करते Forty seven have joined. Forty seven have joined. Forty nine. Yes, sir. You can start with the lecture. I'll just yeah. unmute you. Unmute, yeah. Un just un give unmute me a all. Unmute. Yeah, mute all. Jashan, mute all. Just give me a minute. Yeah, sure. Amit, sir. Okay, can anyone, uh, everyone, uh, am I audible to everyone? Yes, yes, sir. You are yes. audible. Please okay. continue. Everyone yeah. is muted. Thank you very much, Jashan. Uh, so we were that what are the infectious diseases which are of concern in dentistry as i had mentioned what could be the ways uh, covid 19 virus can be transmitted in our clinic and how a patient so even if the patient not necessarily that the patient is uh, knowledgeable about he is been infective but that's the way it spreads so that's a reason we have to be very careful. Various other types of infections like herpes simplex, which is transmitted by a direct contact of herpetic lesion or infected saliva, VZ uh, virus, then you have tuberculosis. Yes, definitely tuberculosis spread is by inhalation, inoculation and ingestion. Now, where does this inhalation come? A patient, you are treating a patient and the patient coughs and if, suppose the mask is not good enough to uh, restrain the uh, bacterial uh, sp uh, spores of tuberculosis. So in that case, when we inhale, we can definitely get infected. Legionella, which is again caused by uh, the aerosols, which this causes pneumonia. So various other viral infections like rubella, coxsackie virus, hepatitis B, all these are transmitted and contaminated uh, or spread by uh, 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 spread by uh, these inf uh, uh, infective materials or infective uh, needles, contaminated needles, uh, instruments, all these things can cause infection or spread of infections. Okay, so do we need to consider all patients who are infected with pathogenic organisms? We are not supposed to just think about those who have come to us with odontogenic infections or where we can definitely see that yes, they are infective because of any type of uh, infection, maybe it a bacterial, viral, fungal, whatever it may be. But we can have to think about those patients who are giving you a history or who are showing symptoms. But we also have to take care of patients who are healthy. Because even they don't know whether they are carrying any type of infection or the latest who being infective, having a travel history, did not disclose about her uh, travel history and now she's infected. More than 100 people around in uh, UP, Lucknow, Kanpur and Delhi. We have to take care of this at least on our side in the clinic as well as in so that we don't get infected as well as others around us, the staff does not get infected and the family members. So what would be the different methods of sterilization in infection? There's a broad classification differentiating between the physical and chemical. 
Now, if you talk about physical, we have the most important thing, which is the sunlight. Now, if you see, in uh, most of the clinics, we have a window, but many places we don't have windows. If you have a window which can be opened up, please do let the sunlight come in because sunlight does not allow any microbial growth due to the presence of ultraviolet rays in them. Second would be heat. Not, ne not necessarily you have to increase the temperature of your clinic, but definitely heat is the way how you can sterilize your articles. So what would be the factors that affect sterilization of, uh, of a material or sterilization of your instruments? Now the nature of heat. Moist heat is considered more effective than your dry heat. Temperature and time. Temperature, they both are inversely proportional. So as the temperature increases, your uh, uh, time can reduce or if you need uh, to sterilize for a longer, then you can reduce your temperature. Number of microorganisms. When you know when you're in, uh, treating a infective person, you need to sterilize the instrument used on that because you know that there would be definitely more microorganisms on that instrument rather than a person to whom you have just uh, done an examination or where you there is no contact of blood where you have done just taken a, a measurement or an alginate impression so in such cases you have to know which instruments or what type of patients are coming to you nature of the uh, microorganism if you have a history of patient having a strain of microorganism which is infective and has a contagious uh, disease so that uh, instruments or sterilization to be taken care accordingly and the type of material where you have articles that are heavily contaminated require high temperature surgical instruments more more uh, sterilization as compared to the examination uh, instruments so what does heat do heat basically it denaturates the protein which is present in the cell wall of the microbes when this happens that's the time when the cell wall breaks and the dna which leaks out and that kills the microbes where moist heat whereas it coagulates and it does not allow any further growth of uh, any type of microorganisms so we consider moist heat is superior to dry heat now what would be the different types of dry heat what we can use and we are been using in the clinic Hot air ovens, which we have seen, but now I think it's not so very commonly used. The most common thing which we are using nowadays is the glass bead sterilizer, where the temperature goes up to 220 degrees Celsius. So as I have mentioned, that the time of sterilization reduces when the temperature is high. So within 10 to 15 seconds, you have a good sterilized instrument. And what type of instruments we sterilize? Endurontic files, burrs, and rotary instruments. Here again, if I talk about COVID-19, the temperature which COVID-19 can withstand is 27 degrees Celsius. That also people are just uh, assuming, or maybe it can, it, because there's no uh, confirmed reports that 20, uh, with 27 degrees, they get killed. If it, that was the reason in India where the temperature goes above 27 to uh, or maybe above 30 degrees in the summers, which is actually right now around 31 to 30 degrees. So this should have reduced, but still we are uh, seeing cases where it, where it is spreading. So uh, we cannot be sure whether uh, COVID-19 can be killed at 27 degrees. So let's not stay till 27 degrees and we can talk about Sterilization by moist heat above 27, that is up to 100 degrees. There are various way, things which are uh, uh, sterilized for uh, just below 100 degrees by pasteurization, which you always see the, your uh, milk and curd, which has been packed. These are earlier, before being packed, they are pasteurized at a low temperature, below 100 for a longer period. Vaccine bath, serum baths, these are all the things which can be uh, sterilized because of uh, uh, with low degree, below 100 degree sterilization.
if we talk about 100 degree that is boiling this is the method which has been there in our uh, uh, knowledge since last maybe you can say 100 years or if not 100 years at least more than 50 years where we have seen our uh, friends the general practitioners if i remember when i was a kid that's a time when uh, these general practitioners had a glass syringe and a needle which they used to put in a sterilizer, a boiling sterilizer, and then reuse the needles and these syringes for giving injections. Touch wood, if I can say that yes, even today we did not get any type of infection with, uh, post that way of sterilization. So we can definitely consider this as a good way of sterilization where the instruments are kept for 10 to 20 minutes into boiling water. And the next and the most important thing or the latest which we are been using or in day to day life and that's how everything has been uh, sterilized in the clinic is when temperatures go above 100 degrees. We use autoclaves. The principle of autoclave is basically to uh, reduce the pressure or uh, sorry, increase the pressure such that we reduce the uh, temperature. Now when bo water boils uh, at 100 degrees, but in pressure, uh, atmosphere uh, increased, then it requires a more higher temperature to boil. So this principle is used by in autoclave. So what are the articles which we sterilize in autoclave, like surgical instruments, lab equipments, and dressings? Very effective way of sterilization. Only thing is the materials, or if it's a cloth or something which is uh, packed in, they get drenched and wet and the air trap may reduce the efficacy. So we have to follow this uh, sterilization protocol in a very uh, proper manner and definitely it's the only way of sterilization right now which has been used into hospitals in operation theaters where even you have these uh, big uh, tower sterilized autoclaves which are using this method till date. So you must have seen this type of uh, autoclaves, the pressure autoclaves or the closed uh, cabinet autoclaves. These are good and uh, we as oral surgeons are been using this since uh, at least for me for last 25 years. Let me talk to you about the types of autoclaves. We have three types of basically autoclaves. The class N autoclave, the class B autoclave and the class S autoclave. Now what is class N autoclave? These, the N stands for a naked solid products. So these autoclaves are basically the ones which we are used into the uh, operation theaters where we wrap uh, the instruments into a cloth or a green drape. So th this is how it is. But the problem is we cannot sterilize textiles or porous load, uh, loads. Whereas a very important thing when we think that, okay, we are sterilizing uh, pouches. So in that case, I would like to bring to your notice that the, as the cycles do not have the right characteristic to enter these pouches, these type or N-class autoclaves are not very effective. I am not saying absolutely not effective, but very effective, not very effective in cases where if you are uh, sealing your instruments into pouches. Generally, that's what is happening nowadays. We seal the instruments into pouches, seal our implant uh, boxes into these pouches, and then we put it for auto N type of autoclaves. Now, when you come out or bring out, you feel that it is sterilized, but the right uh, uh, test would be you can stick the markers in, in the inside of your uh, implant box and see if the color is changing. If the colors are changing, yes, it is effective. But in most of the cases, you will see that the color has not changed. So it is not a very good type of in, uh, autoclave. So the uh, these are the types of autoclave what we generally see in uh, the pressure cooker type or the laboratory type or the vertical autoclave, which is very common into hospitals. So we have something which is called the B autoclave. Now B autoclave is basically where it is a big small sterilization which all, uh, uh, all type of uh, sterilization is taken care, all type of loads are taken care. 
So you can sterilize implants, lumens, or hollow wares. Uh, and the most important thing, if you see, you can sterilize pouching instruments also. The instruments which are you have placed in your pouches, even that you can put. Otherwise, you can put it in your wrapping also. Or anything, any garments, gowns, dressing, everything can be st uh, uh, sterilized in this. And that's the reason this is considered as the one of the best type of uh, ways of sterilization. So you have various type of autoclaves which are uh, available in the market. You can decide on any one of them. Definitely look forward for uh, uh, their history or the reviews which people have taken. Speak to them and then you can decide whether to buy from which uh, dealer. Since the, I am not been uh, or neither the association has uh, been uh, sponsored by any particular company, so we would not be like to name any. But yes, definitely don't go for cheap or low uh, priced auto uh, B class autoclaves, which they are actually not. What you can do is before buying them, take a demo, put your materials, and at the same time put your markers in them and see whether they are changing uh, the color. If they are do, uh, doing that, then definitely you can go for it. Lastly is the S-class autoclave. It is a combination of N and B type. These are basically more of uh, industrial uh, use, which we generally don't use them. These are huge autoclaves, which are used to uh, autoclave multiple uh, huge loads. So we, in our healthcare or uh, practically into our dentistry field, we I consider B class autoclave as the most important thing. The other various ways of uh, sterilization is radiation, where, which will be two types the ionizing and the non ionizing. Non ionizing uh, rays are low energy rays, uh, rays which are very poor penetrative power, and uh, uh, ionizing are the high penetrative power so you all have these uh, seen these cabinets uh, which are been sold into exponent fandent and all these places see to it they are actually ionizing rays and not just a decorative cabinet over there so with ionizing radiations we can sterile disposable materials like uh, needles which are generally done by the manufacturers and all these things so these are gamma rays from cobalt 60 are used. Whereas uh, non-ionizing is the infrared uh, rays which are used for purification of air into operation theaters. Chemical methods, very important in today, disinfectants are those chemicals that destroy pathogenic bacteria from inanimate surfaces. Inanimate surfaces are also known as formites which can Contain the microbes, but at the same time, do not help them into multiplication. Okay. Uh, these again, the ways how what happens to them, how uh, coagulation of uh, uh, means how the bacteria are killed. They cause coagulation of bacterial proteins. Proteins is the most important thing to for life in any type of microbes or cell living uh, living organisms. So which are these disinfectants? Alcohols. Yes, it is important, not the alcohol. I mean to say the actual alcohol, the ethanol, isopropyl alcohol, and uh, where, uh, other aqueous quaternary ammonium compounds like benzalkonium chloride or povidine iodine, which is betadine, which is commonly used in clinics as this, uh, not only disinfectant, but as a mouth rinse also. You can talk about uh, Chlorhexidin also. We have various aldehydes like formaldehydes, glutaraldehydes, for, uh, glutaraldehydes, who are, uh, these are, uh, is a liquid which has been used into operation theaters where we cannot, uh, if suppose uh, we have dropped an instrument or something and we want an instrument again. So these are those uh, glutaraldehyde chambers where immediately we, uh, soak the instrument into that uh, side X and for after a few minutes it is good to use again. Halogens, uh, digonides like chlorhexidine, mouth rinses, halogens like uh, sodium hypochloride or 
all will bleach which is also used into incinerators where the uh, soiled uh, dressings or uh, body parts are been incinerated and which is been used by in big way by the medical uh, medical waste uh, collectors so we have to maintain a good sterilization a good disinfectant protocol so how do we start with it how do we go ahead with it the first thing is cleaning of instruments now cleansing agents like soaps and detergents basically what are they doing they are basically causing a surfactant uh, disorientation where the material which is present on the sterilization gets detached and that's how it gets washed away now the same thing is uh, while washing your hands when you're washing your hands these emulsification causes uh, detachment of the microbes from the tissue or from the surface of your hand and that's a reason and nowadays you must have seen or you must have uh, uh, seen a lot of uh, whatsapp videos a very good video which i saw a few days back and maybe most of you must have seen a person showing the way or the efficacy of uh, soap how to use and uh, the six steps where he's worn a glove and uh, spreading black paint on that glove so that's how it is showing that how each and every part of your hand can be washed so soaps and detergents are very good uh, way of cleansing away your uh, microbes you have various other solvents like acetone and aldehyde and phenols when before uh, um, once you have cleaned those uh, instruments and before you are putting into sterilization you need to re uh, drape them you need to put it either into drapes of uh, cotton drapes which is a green color or any other color or you can put it into pouches and seal them the reason behind it is whenever you are putting a uh, instrument without draping or uh, st uh, in, without the pouches when you are removing it you would be touching it with your hand or touching it with your other instrument which is not been sterilized and in that case you can definitely contaminate it again most important thing today is the covid 19 or the novel coronavirus this is the most naughty or the most contagious type of virus so we have to take care of this virus why we have to take care because this is the virus which is spreading day in and day out the i don't know how many people of uh, how many of you have seen this movie contagion uh, I just saw it a few days back after uh, this corona virus spread and exactly what has happened not necessary that you have to have a travel history not necessary you yourself have to come in contact with someone who's uh, coughing or cold it is just by if a person is touched your uh, a handle or a bar with a infective hand that virus can stay alive on that handle which is called a fomite and when you touch that again and rub your eyes or touch it on your face or you uh, your nasal mucosa comes in contact you can get infected so we have to be very careful about all these things so the uniform universal precautions not only for that for, but for everyone everything else how can you go about it how to start with so you employ uh, employ protective barriers gown face mask eyewear and the face uh, guard now these uh, i don't think that anyone is new to these things everyone knows about it now face mask some say it should be three ply some say it should be four ply it can it if it is if you are not uh, comfortable enough in three ply you can wear two three ply masks so that becomes three plus three that is six ply that's fair enough but at least wear something don't expose yourself without anything immunization we don't have any immunization or for this covid 19 but at least we have immunization of uh, with other viral infections or other bacterial infections get yourself and your whole dental team to uh, immunize we must have got immunized in the dental school when we were there which was that time it was compulsory but i just uh, don't remember any one of us 
who is getting a booster dose every three years. I don't think so. Uh, this is happening. So we have to uh, immunize ourselves. Maybe tomorrow if we have this uh, vaccine for COVID-19, we could immunize ourselves with that also. As you know, dentist, there was a, a chart which was uh, circulating in WhatsApp. Dentist at the highest risk to get infected. So tomorrow, uh, uh, along with hepatitis B, maybe the dental schools will come up with the compulsory uh, immunization with COVID-19 virus. Routine hand washing. If, uh, routine hand washing is the key to remove most of your bacterial or viral uh, infections or, uh, or any type of uh, uh, microbes. The way I will not uh, show you again because you have already seen the six steps. First on your palm, then uh, cross your fingers, then back side of your palm, then your thumb, your tip of your uh, fingers and the rest. So these are the steps in, uh, and it should, we should take at least 20 to 25 seconds to clean our uh, hand with a good uh, microbial soap. In a clinic, avoid footwear. These basically are for the general uh, infections. Uh, if you cannot avoid a footwear, you have something nowadays when you go to see a, a property or something, uh, you have this slip on uh, plastic covers, which you can wear it on your uh, footwear. Let them wear that, but at least you are avoiding any type of uh, dirt which is there in the surrounding coming into your clinic avoid refreshments now you have to have a different uh, set uh, a two separate setup you cannot expect uh, uh, to have your refreshments in your surgical uh, area let it be in your reception or let it be in a, a separate room but not in your surgical area where you're uh, uh, conducting your surgeries or uh, do not allow relatives in operatory yes you have to sometimes when you're treating a female patient, a young female patient, but many times there are people, okay, uh, the mother is coming, the father is coming, or uh, the uncle is coming. Do not uh, encourage such things. You can politely uh, inform these uh, relatives uh, if they are not ready, that only one is allowed and not more than one. Use of vacuum cleaner in hard to. You have a maid who's coming and mopping and sweeping the floors, but you know that it is not done at every nick and corner. So at least once a week or twice a week, ask your own staff to you do this because there are many areas which are hard to reach and there is, these are the areas where you have maximum growth potential for these viruses. Fumigation. Today morning it was a very hot topic about uh, fumigation of the uh, operatory. I'll uh, speak about it in a few minutes. So this was uh, the way how you can uh, control in your own clinic. Now again, if you have environmental cleaning and disinfections, let uh, not only in your clinic but around have this. People have this habit of spitting out once going out of the clinic see to it that spills of blood and body fluids which are spit out inside the clinic are cleaned properly at least uh, you sh you can ask your maid to do that if uh, your staff does not agree to it uh, uh, in your uh, this thing uh, you can ask for a spray white uh, uh, white spray technique for cleaning and should be employed because when you spray you are uh, discontaminating the surface but when you wipe it the cloth which you are using can also be infective and then it remains over there so spray wipe spray technique should be uh, taken care of discard sharp instruments and needles into glass bead sterilizer so that you do not give any chance of cross contamination identify which patient is at high risk now in today's scenario if a patient says i am in pain now for next 10 to 15 days i don't know 
when this isolation will get over but if you are and as most of us who are just uh, taking care of emergency patients you need to ask them a proper history a proper history would be a travel history and not only travel of themselves but anyone who is uh, uh, in their family so we have to uh, take a proper travel history the moment the patient comes in ask with uh, let them have um, rinse with 0.2 percent chlorhexidine this will give us maximum relief of the oral flora which is contaminated to uh, so that even if the aerosols are there they have 50 percent less of microbes use of rubber dam and high volume evacuation high volume evacuation definitely if you don't have pooling of water in the mouth the chances of aerosols from uh, aerators and all that will be less you once you have taken care of all that you need to uh, take care of your instruments hand pieces should be autoclave and wherever possible if you are using disposable hand pieces which are available nowadays uh, you can use that uh, sterilization of for sharp objects in formaldehyde chambers i am not sure whether you all know about it but in uh, operation theater where you need to sterilize um, the leads of uh, your cautery we have these chambers where uh, in the below there are it's a two tire chamber in which in the upper tire the uh, leads of the cautery are placed and uh, uh, in the below chamber formalin tablets are uh, uh, placed so the vapor of this formalin is uh, helps in autoclaving i'm sorry for the disturbance around i'm <laughs> talking Amit, Amit you have 8 minutes Amit you have 7 minutes left out Amit, you uh, have seven minutes left. I'm going to finish. Don't worry. I'll yeah, finish. yeah. And then we will have to then we'll have to reconnect for the question yeah, answer yeah. session. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so sterilization with formaldehyde chambers I have mentioned. Autoclaving used boxes can be used. Table tops should be regularly sprayed with disinfectants. Drainage uh, is very important uh, because any type of uh, uh, in spit uh, in the spit in the spittoon would uh, can recontaminate the whole thing and the most important thing is your air conditioners which should be regularly serviced now we as i was talking about fumigation it's a very important uh, way of uh, decontaminating or disinfecting your clinic the most important uh, thing why because you cannot reach the ceilings the fan and all these places in the morning uh, doc, the one of the doctor uh, uh, was contemplating that uh, if you use the 70 ml formalin and 30 per gram of potassium uh, per magnet which has been used for ages to uh, sterilize uh, it causes um, cancer i i disagree with that or maybe there are many other things which can cause cancer but we can this is the one thing which uh, we can do in regular uh, as a regular practice so that cancer is uh, it, ha it there are many other things like if you uh, you say vix vapor up is banned abroad but we still use it so not necessary that everything which are we are saying can cause cancer uh, I will not uh, go into the conversation or uh, controversies about this, but this is the way I do. I use uh, 70 ml formalin, which is readily available in the chemist and add 30 grams of potassium per minute. And just leave the clinic because the vapors will help in uh, disinfecting or uh, uh, contamination or reduce the contamination of the clinic. A uh, regular practice which you can do is use culture swabs and uh, send it to the lab or nearby lab so you know what is the sterility of your clinic. Dental unit uh, use anti retraction walls, uh, bacterial filters, chemical disinfecting, and aspirators. Uh, surgery design, as I said, you should have a separate operatory compared to the waiting. Use of infection control uh, methods which uh, you 
your biohazard is definitely been taken away by your uh, medical uh, medical disposable team so i always believe a healthy mind and a healthy body can work only in a healthy environment today if we talk about uh, uh, covid 19 now in this case we have to take care about not only ourselves but our community also you are wearing mask your patient is wearing mask but you never know that the patient is a carrier so starting from the door uh, the knob where he is using to open the door let that knob be sanitized every 2 hours or after every patient the patient comes in definitely when he comes in i give him a sanitizer to desanitize his, his hands at least so that you know that wherever he is going to touch it is sterile third thing is the moment he enters first of all for this 10 to 12 days i appeal all of you do not think about economics right now think about your health right now because if you are healthy then only you can generate more money later on so see to it that you are not and uh, taking care or not doing any elective surgeries if the elect sorry elective procedures if elective procedures can be postponed do postpone it do not continue with that yes emergencies you should and if it is an emergency of pain try to uh, give medications and postpone the treatment till if not then take utmost care before treating such patients the the moment the patient is sitting in the on your chair the first thing you ask is uh, 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 the first thing which is uh, asked is to use a mouth rinse a chlorhexidine on any type of good mouth rinse or disinfecting or decontaminating the oral cavity uh, am i audible yeah yeah mr yeah. audible okay so basically uh, this is exactly what we are supposed to do and this is exactly how we are supposed to save guard yourself now the other day i and now uh, the a practice which i am doing right now is the moment i leave my house i am wearing a examination glove so the moment i am going out of my house then uh, i am opening the lift door i am opening the car door i am driving to the clinic i am uh, opening the the moment i enter the clinic i dispose of that glove again when i come back i am wearing the glove and uh, that's the way i try to protect myself my family and my community thank you very much jashan take over jashan jashan for the question answer session take over unmute jashan unmute thank you sir for the fantastic lecture we'll be taking the questions and answers right now however we are just 5 minutes short of uh cutting the meeting again one minute so, one minute just one minute so can we restart the meeting you can continue the question one you can take one or two questions then once again restart it okay there is one person who wants to ask the question he has raised his hand yeah yes please you are unmute your name is to be seen as galaxy m30s thank you uh, Uh, I'll uh, unmute Shinde sir. Yes, sir. Hello, Dr. Jashan. Hello, Dr. Jashan. Hello. Congratulations, sir, for a beautiful lecture. Thank you, sir. Uh, Raj and uh, Jashan. Yes, sir. Thanks a Please, lot, sir. sir. Very good effort. Very good effort. Thanks a lot. And congratulations sir. on the first webinar. Yes, sir. Uh, Amit, uh, there's yeah. only one question. Uh, there are a lot of actually uh, misleading or uh, different uh, reports uh, about the medications. Uh, can you uh, elaborate uh, 